Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt, and this is the BMW i7, and it's been on the channel before, but now we've had a chance to spend a full week with it, and we found 13 more interesting things that we didn't cover in last video, so let's get into those. So the first thing we have to talk about is obviously this TV screen. It's 31 inches diagonally measured and it's got 8K resolution. So what you do is you go into your side control screen here, swipe up, home, you can go to modes, select theater, all of the blinds go up, screen comes down, plays the outrageous Bang & Olufsen sound system, and it welcomes you. It is super cool. You've got Amazon Fire TV built in, but it also has HDMI compatibility in the back, so you can plug in things like your laptop or an Xbox or PlayStation or whatever you want. And if you want this screen itself, it's under $5,000. It also comes paired with the lounge seat that we have here. Uh, it's like a $7,000, $8,000 option, but alone it's only five grand. Now, the only issue is that the rear camera here isn't digital, so with this down, it is gonna be hard to see out the back of the car. And while we're back here, I have to talk about the doors because there's three different ways you can open them and they're automatic. This one up here is your fully automatic button. This is just an electronic release that you can then push to open. And if you ever run out of battery, there's a mechanical fail safe underneath here. But we're gonna push this, the door is gonna open, and we can step out. And the same thing to close it. Or you can come to the outside here, you can close it like normal, or you give that little button a push and it closes. Now people online have been saying that it doesn't really work for them that well or it sometimes is glitchy or whatever, but there's sensors here in your rocker panel as well as in the door handle your, itself. So what I've found success doing, and this works over 90% of the time, is you push the button, you take a step back, it reads, and then it opens all the way. Pretty cool. And the same thing for the front seat. Push it, step back, patience is a virtue, it's reading, and then it opens. And then the cool thing about the front is you can get in and you can press this button to close the doors or you can put your foot on the brake. That is the coolest thing. But we're back in the rear seat because most luxury cars like this have a center screen here where you can control stuff like your blinds and your air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. But you see you don't have it here. You have a wireless charging pad and a couple cup holders. It's pretty cool. You've got the crushed glass effect from the front, but where you control everything is on these door screens. So you swipe up like you would on your phone or whatever like that. You have a home screen where you can control the TV content. Again, you can use it as a phone, whatever is paired to the, to the car. You can control the TV screen individually. You can go into my modes and you can set the mode of the car. Again, theater mode like we just demonstrated or expressive or digital art or whatever but you can also control all of your seats. Now obviously you can set your adjustments here and you can control the front passenger seat or you can control the other side passenger if you really want. Of course it's got massage, bought like 10 different modes, pretty crazy. And of course it's heated and cooled. The weird thing though, when you come into this screen, it defaults to have the heated seat on, you can see it's on medium, and the cooled seat on medium. So that's a little bit weird, but that's not even the coolest thing. This has the rear executive lounge seat package. So I hit this button here and the front seat will whir out of the way and then I will be totally reclined. Sweet. I should mention this executive rear lounge seat, I think I mentioned it's $7,200, $7,250. Um, it does include the screen and it does get you this seat that reclines back here. If you want just the screen, it's about $4,800. And the next point is gonna be impossible to demonstrate, but I'm gonna lay B-roll over and it's the ambient light. You go into my BMW, sorry, vehicle apps, interior lighting, ambience, and you can select different colors. The interesting thing though about the color selection is that you can get multiple colors in your band here, but only through the different vehicle modes. So like expressive is like gold and blue, uh, sport is red or orange and blue, and you know, just stuff like that. But you can't go in and select individual colors with a two-tone effect. That's the only issue. Otherwise it's really, really cool. Plus you get ambient lighting in strands in your sunroof. 
And I almost forgot to mention, you also get ambient lighting in your speakers to light up in there. It is just visually stunning at night. But let's talk crystal. Now, it's not uncommon to have crystal in your BMW these days, especially one of this price point and this tier, but this is the most crystal that I've ever seen in a BMW. Your start stop button, that's crystal. Your gear selector tab, crystal. Your iDrive wheel, super satisfying, also crystal. Volume knob, also super satisfying, crystal. This is kind of a crystalline effect or like a crushed glass effect, and of course, your seat adjustments, also crystal. And of course, you get this really cool prism effect that kind of reflects like rainbows all over the cabin. Uh, you can kind of see one here, but one of the coolest places to have crystal, and it's part of the executive package, is in your headlights. That is some next level baller shit. And then let's talk colors and paint. This is the frozen deep gray. It's kind of like a matte black finish. It's very soft, it's very satin. It looks pretty nice. It is a $5,000 option. Interestingly, the paint is a $5,000 option, but this is the upgraded Merino white leather and it's free. I love that. I'm always a sucker for white leather. You guys know. Now we talked about the crushed glass dashboard thing, but what do you not see? Is it vents? A lot of EVs don't have showing or exposed vents and you have to go into the screen and adjust where it's pointing, Tesla, Rivian, etc. BMW has packaged this really well. There is a gap you can see starting here and going all the way over here. These are where your vents are and you still have physical controls where you want them to go. And you can adjust how much you want them to blow, all or none, right here. So it's still kind of the best of both worlds. There's a digital aspect, but you still have the physical controls of your climate. So if you're really hot and need to cool off or the other way around, it's still nice to have these controls. And then we're gonna talk about this carbon trim. It's all the way across the dash, as you can see, and it's free. This is a free option. It's also right here on your center console and it's in the backs of the headrests here. And touching on some general luxuries, we're gonna talk about the executive package. It's $6,550, and what you get is active comfort drive. This is absolutely and unequivocally the most smooth and refined driving experience I've ever had, or at least spent a week in. The only thing that comes close is that Rolls-Royce Ghost. It gets you the automatic doors, an absolute must for me. It gets you those crystal headlights that we talked about, and you do get front massage. You also get back massage, but that's a different package, and you get active roll stabilization. This thing does not roll in a corner, like at all. It's pretty amazing. Plus, for another 1300 bucks, you can get the Climate Comfort Laminated Glass which keeps things a little bit cooler and keeps things really quiet and refined on the road. And then look at these speaker covers. This is for your Bowers and Wilkins system. It sounds incredible. It's a $4,800 option, so it should be. And there are speakers inside your seats, in the seat backs and in the seat butts to make you vibrate when the bass comes in so you can actually feel it in another dimension. It is really cool. And of course, the tweeters and the speakers here light up in the doors when you have the ambient light on just such a cool system. But then of course there's luxuries in the rear, things like these headrest pillows for example, and you've got your passenger side lounge chair that we talked about, and your center console has that crushed effect in your wireless charger that we showed earlier. And of course it's heated, cooled, and massaging back here. And then we're going to talk hazard lights because watch this, you press it and the whole dash lights up all the way across. And speaking of lights, we're going to talk about puddle lights, which obviously you can't see here, but again, I'll lay over a B-roll clip. Now, most cars will shoot the puddle lights out from right under the wing mirror, or here, or maybe even here. But when I opened the door, the puddle lights didn't move at all, because they're actually coming out right under here, right in there. That's where your puddle light comes out, and it shoots down here. So it's just always there, whether the door is open or closed. Super cool. Again, maybe a small thing, but the mats back here, the carpets, really, I mean, this is nicer than any carpet or rug in my house. And then we're gonna touch on the looks briefly. Now, is it my favorite looking thing? No, but is it better looking than the Mercedes EQS? Absolutely. You do have that split headlight thing with the running lights. And again, they're crystals, you can kind of see it here, but it's very X7 of it, which makes a whole lot of sense. Totally closed off grill. Again, that frozen deep gray paint, very nice. We've got upgraded 21 inch wheels. They've got M logos on them, of course, black brakes. And then it's pretty simple down the side. 
It's a pretty conventional sedan. It is big though. That's one thing you should know. Measure it before you get it in your garage. And you do have kind of a gradienting triangle thing that we've seen on other BMWs lately. And from the back, I've got molded in lip spoiler, one of the only gloss black items on the exterior. And then of course, no exhaust, because why would you? And a center trunk release. And then we're gonna talk drive modes because there's a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. Now there's some normal ones like personals would be your custom one and you can set your own custom ambient light and that sort of thing. And you can control different stuff about the modes in each different one. Sport, you have to deactivate a bit of traction control, but again, you can control different things about it, the damping, the steering, and all that sort of stuff. But then you have things like efficient, which would be your eco mode, the whole dash goes blue. Oh, I should have mentioned, Sport has one of the coolest ambient lighting fixtures. It goes all red or orange, and then a blue bar is gonna come in. It's hard to see here, but I'll lay a B-roll clip again. And then expressive, this is one of my favorites, and all of the sounds change with all these different modes. This one's blue, but then there's some gold on the side, and it has like the THX, like when you were watching a movie as a kid, the THX theme or sound when that came in, that's what this one sounds like when you drive it. There's relax, which sounds like you're in a massage room, which is really nice because you actually can get a massage here. Theater we showed you, and then there's digital art. I don't know if this rotates out. I think I said that in the last video, but I don't know if this actually rotates out, but really bright purple all the way across, changes your gauge cluster, the whole thing. And then we're gonna talk headliner. You can see it's a black Alcantara. And from what I could see on the, on the spec sheet, this is a $5,500 option. This is a BMW individual composition Alcantara headliner, $5,500. I'm sure there's more included with that fee because I can't imagine that this, just an Alcantara headliner is $5,500. Then look at your steering wheel. You see you only have one paddle and it's on the left side. Well, that's the boost paddle. And what it does is essentially gives you a whole mess of power for 10 seconds. So if you're rolling around in your personal mode or efficient, but then you wanna hit it just to have a little bit of fun or if you need to pass somebody, you can press this and then all of a sudden you're gonna have all the power, your seats will bolster in and it can count down from 10 to give you the most performance without having to go all the way over into sport mode. This is cool, I love this because I want the max luxury experience with just a bit of power every now and then. And this very simple bit to the left of your steering wheel, this is your driver assist system. And it is phenomenal. We do a whole comprehensive evaluation of it in our commute video, which is live on the channel now. But basically this, I went to where I was working this week and then I drove all the way home. Once I got on the highway, I turned this on, did about 38 miles of highway and I didn't touch the steering wheel once. It does all the radar cruise. It won't overtake anyone for you, but you can just flick the turn signal and it'll change lanes for you pretty immediately and pretty purposefully, of course, as long as it's safe. But this, this is really, really good. And of course, how could we not talk about cameras? The 360 cameras on BMWs, always impressive. Your 360 view with your gesture control, always cool. It does struggle when you have a phone, but if you don't have a phone, it works really well. And this is an EV, so it probably has a frunk, right? Well, no, actually not. It's just got this big plastic engine cover which is just covering all the motors and all sorts of electrical bits so you don't get any storage up here despite having a really long hood well then you've probably they probably maximized the trunk space then right well they've done the best that they could but we'll open it up here and i guess it is nice and big but since we have that uber luxury rear seat we can't fold the rear seats and then I guess my dad was mentioning that this could be bigger. To me, it's, it's big enough to be practical and usable, but it's not cavernous, it's not massive. But I don't know that you're probably hauling a whole lot in your $140,000, $160,000 luxury EV. One of the silly things I like this week, electric glove box release, cool. And then I wanna talk about the gauge cluster because it's really cool, it's totally customizable. You hit this little button over here and you can select what type of layout you want. You can adjust the head-up display, which is pretty awesome. Get the little wings for like sport mode. Um, but on your content here, you can have nothing. You can have your like eco or trip information. You've got range information. You've got your adaptive cruise and that sort of thing. But this is the coolest one. This is your augmented reality. So you can switch over to a bigger layout. Okay, bigger, 
even bigger still. And then you can see, and it's gonna project on the screen here exactly where you need to turn if you've used the internal or native navigation system. It's super cool. And then there's the cup holders up here. Look, they're individual, so you can close one or the other. This is a little bit, I kind of wish maybe they were wrapped in carbon fiber like the rest of the trimming here. But the other thing is they're not heated or cooled, which I think is maybe a little bit of a miss. You do get a little ambient lighting here, and it is a nice size, and you can put an extender up here, which would be perfectly fine for my application, but it's interesting that they're individual. It's a little less interesting that they're not heated and cooled. And we should probably mention it, the EV stuff. Of course, it's back here on your passenger side rear fender as a normal gas cap would be. But here you have a 101 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, that's about the usable size of it anyway, which equates to about 320 miles of range. It's 308 according to the window sticker, but that will be affected depending on what wheels you get. Smaller wheels will get you more range, bigger wheels will get you less range. And according to the window sticker, if you charge on a 240 volt level two outlet at home, it's gonna charge basically from flat to full in about 12 hours. And then I wanna talk about this little bit here. You see it says adaptive, this is your adaptive regen, which is a cool feature that's kind of built in. So I personally don't like the one pedal drive thing here. And you see you don't have like paddles to select regen levels like you would in like a Hyundai or a Kia or whatever, but this has adaptive regen. So basically this works, what I'm thinking is in tandem with the front radar sensors or front camera to detect if anyone's in front of you. And basically if it's detecting that anyone's in front of you, the second that you lift your foot off the throttle, it'll kind of slow itself down so it won't crash into somebody, but it'll also modulate it so it doesn't just like stop you super aggressively and then you have to get back into the throttle to kind of bleed and smooth into your braking. It works really, really well. And of course, if no one's in front of you at all, it'll read that and it'll not put the regen on. And then you can just coast for miles. And of course, this has the iconic sounds by Hans Zimmer, which we've tested in other videos. And here's a little sample of what each mode sounds like. And then just a couple things on the inside of the door. Look at this. It's all in English, except it doesn't say BMW. It says Bayerisch Motrin Wirk AG Auto Group. And also a little seven embossed in the top there. And the last thing we'll talk about, and I know this has been a long video, but there's so much to cover on this thing, and that's price. Now this is the X-Drive 60, which is the less expensive version and the less powerful version but it still comes with dual motor all wheel drive unlike the Benz entry level. And I never felt like this was slow or lacking in power. The X-Drive 60 here starts at about $120,000. As tested, it's about $155,000, which is a lot of money. But I built one out for myself and I still equipped pretty much everything that I would want, but I forewent things like the satin black paint and I built one out for about $140,000 and me personally, I can't wait for about three years when these things are like sixty to seventy thousand dollars. I really want this thing. So those are the thirty-five most interesting things about the BMW i7. Now make sure that you stay tuned because we'll do a full and comprehensive review of this thing after we've spent our full week with it. So we'll see you then.